where was I? Ah, yes. Two unlikely versions of one impossible story. One day, you wake up and turn on a game. But something strange happens this time. You meet the slightest inconvenience. You can't get over a challenge. The game won't let you fast travel during a certain sequence. Or something as petty as forgetting what you're supposed to be doing and all your energy for wanting to play the game vanishes. Instead of trucking on trying to overcome these little nuisances, 20, 10, or even less than 5 minutes in, you turn the game off wondering if you've been wasting your time all these years. Your mind races, or even numbs out in a weird way. You think of all the flaws in a game, or gaming in general. Or maybe you just mindlessly play the game and let time pass you by. You see your completed mission list stack, and stack, and stack, until it becomes overbearing. You've completed so many things, but don't remember any of them. They were just mindless filler for you to kill time until you're ready to fall asleep. Or you just lay in bed trying to grasp what in the world's happening to you right now. When you enter the game, it's as if you're somewhere else entirely. You need a hand in your fetch quests, but you're wondering if the time you're investing in the game is better suited on something else. It's nostalgic to the time you should be focusing on your work, but you're thinking about what to do on your free time. You gotta finish your assignment and turn it in. But here you are, procrastinating on Twitter. The deadline's near, and the rush you get from trying to get a multi-day task into a few hours puts you into overdrive. Something's different this time. You finished the task at hand, but the rush is still there. Your alertness hasn't left you. It sticks with you, more than just a few hours. You have something crawling on your back to keep you on edge. Then you're trying to relax during your time off, but you can't help but think about your responsibilities for something that is yet to come. The knife that was against your neck to finish your assignment follows you to your time off. You can't shake it with any of your normal relaxation routines. Deep breaths turn into deep sighs. You constantly feel off your game, even when you're not in the game. You're on the bench trying to relax, but the adrenaline from the high-paced game stalks you in your time of rest. Okay, rolling! Uh, uh, oh! Having your focus waver during times of recreation is no way to live at all. You may give yourself the excuse that you'll save time if you multitask. You'll tell yourself it's important to be prepared for whatever it is that'll happen sometime other than rather being ready for what's right in front of you. You look away in hopes of not messing up the next thing that's yet to happen, but you haven't noticed how you slipped up on what's happening right now until it's too late. It's okay to be absent-minded from time to time. It's okay to have your attention wander when you're doing something remedial. You can break the monotony of your daily hour commute for work each day by listening to your favorite podcast. But pausing the game every minute to respond to emails and text messages will leave you feeling empty. Juggling between your you time and your responsibility simultaneously will only cause you to fumble and drop the ball. Maybe you'll even trip over one of the balls and land on your back and wonder, was all of this worth it? It isn't just having your personal time distracted by responsibilities, but also trying to stay relevant to your news feed. Was it worth it to draw your attention away from a movie, a project, or even a person to take a sneak peek at your social media feed? Is staying up to date with the things that have nothing to do with you worth it when you have to sacrifice feeling engaged just to do so? It's been a long day. You're stressed out and try to unwind, but you distract yourself from resting. You're afraid of missing out on that new post from someone you admire. You try to slow down and catch a break, but you're eyeing that video you have in the background as you try to enjoy the snack that you can no longer taste. No longer can you feel the soft embrace of your bed as you scroll through Reddit. You begin to question what you're scattering your energy into. Is having your senses at 110%, seeing 10 different things at once, worth sacrificing being in tune to the one thing important to you at this time? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell. Maybe instead of taking a hundred steps in the game, taking a hundred steps outside will help you so much more. Perhaps, instead of meeting up with the next objective marker on the map, you can meet up with someone who will actually have an impact on your life. You've used video games as an escape for so long that when you need an escape from the game, you don't have the right cards to choose from to do anything else and you realize you can't run away from your problems as fast as Sonic the Hedgehog can. You 
feel some shame that you can't find an alternative to your old reliable stress reliever. You become embarrassed that you're turning the game's difficulty down. But hear me out here. It's okay to not want to get good anymore. After spending your $60, it's okay to take the easy route. You'll get a calm, easy experience that you're more likely to finish, over having your self-esteem beaten down over and over again until your money is gone to waste, and end the game unfinished indefinitely or even forever, and realizing it's okay to abandon a game that's too much for you at this point in your life. While you're wallowing in the sinking black hole video games can trap you in, you reminisce on all the joys video games have done for you. You remember the blood, sweat, and tears you've gone through. You remember that you performed your best when you were at your happiest. I used to be abundantly quiet. I still am, just to a lesser degree. I rarely ever spoke to anyone. I didn't speak much to the people around me. Not to friends. Not to anyone. I was completely mute at school. I didn't mutter a word until part way through high school. I remember, at the age of 15, I had an IT class. Our teacher let us bring video game consoles to class every Friday. People were playing Guitar Hero and Call of Duty as I sat at my desk to relax. Someone came up to me and asked if I played anything. Street Fighter, I muttered. They gave me a look of surprise. The following weeks, my classmates brought in Street Fighter Alpha Anthology and the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, also Capcom vs SNK2. I was the only one doing combos in Alpha 3, I was the only one parrying full supers in Third Strike, and I was the only one doing Rock Howard's Neo Deadly Rave in CVS 2. After a few weeks of me winning had passed, I felt the urge to help my peers get better. For the first time in my life, I took the initiative to start a conversation. I would try to give my classmates advice on how to get better. I played less and watched more so I could make little comments to help them. It was the easiest way I could think of with breaking out of my shell. One year later, when I was 16, I entered my first tournament. I've always had a lot of anxiety about leaving the house, except for going to school. I was more excited than nervous to compete in something that I loved and that pushed me out of my comfort zone tremendously. My brother dropped me off. Everyone was in their mid-twenties to early thirties. I got last place, but it didn't matter. I entered another tournament soon after. It was out of town, and I went with someone from my IT class. I got last place again, but this time I got to know some of the competitors. After a few more tournaments in my hometown, I finally didn't lose all my matches. One of my opponents quit mid-match, and I went on to get fifth place out of about 30 people. This was a huge self-esteem boost. As tournaments went on, I had made friends in the community that offered to drive me to more tournaments out of town so I can have better competition. My confidence snowballed and kept growing with all the attention I was getting from people who've been playing at least a decade longer than I have. The confidence I gained from competing in Street Fighter began to seep into other aspects of my life. My grades were getting better as I applied the same hard work from competing to my schoolwork. I began to feel confident in actually taking the initiative to talk to my classmates. And, crazily enough, I was confident enough to pursue my crush my senior year of high school. But let's not get into that. The video game got me out of my comfort zone, and so much more. I still talk to many people I met through the tournaments, and the people I've met from them have helped me in so many ways. They helped me become more confident in who I am. They helped me do better in school. Video games helped show me what it was like to finally enjoy my life wholeheartedly. And yet, the same medicine became my poison. I'm still going through the first half of this video topic. This video is mostly for me to put into perspective the dangers and the freedoms playing games have done for my mental health. At the time of this writing, I am scheduled to see a doctor. I'm not going to ignore something that could be serious. If you're going through something similar to the first half of this topic, I implore you to reach out for help too, be it from a good friend or a professional. I just wanted to take some time to breathe and share some of the bad, but not without remembering the joys games can offer you. This has been Johnny and thanks for spending time with me. Have a good day. Valley King wants to denounce his Brazilian heritage.
And then Jotai is cool being a Mexican. 